So the pasta sheets are on top of meatballs. Yeah. Must be like a wee tractor. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We have joined us now an actress famous for being a dairy girl and soon to take over the entire world. Yes. Move over, SJP. <laughs> SMJ is in town. <laughs> it's Sersha <Saoirse> Monica <laughs> Jackson, everybody. Oh. Hey. Thank you. Hi, Sersha. Hi, yeah. How are right. you? I'm good. I'm absolutely buzzing to be here. Oh, that's I great. I love the podcast. I'm a big fan, so I'm thrilled. Oh, my it's God. So thank nice. you for coming. That's really me. great. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for coming to see us. We were dead excited you, yeah. you were going to come around for lunch. How do you feel about the acronym? Uh, there's a good vibe to it, doesn't it? Yeah, I like SMJ. Um, SMJ. Yeah. I'm on to it. The team actually said that SMJ was mentioned in an email from, like, your people to the team. Yeah. I like it. I like it. It's maybe like, I only actually get called it in work situations. Maybe it's like a branding thing that I don't know about. Right. right. <laughs> Do you ever have an AH? AH, AH is not no, really no, too uh, sort too, of. Sounds yeah. like uh, it's no. too close to AA, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. 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 Maybe that like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and do you like being called Nick or Grammy? So what? what do you want me to call you? Because if you say daddy, I'm out of here. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for coming. I do like a daddy. <laughs> I'm not bothered. I yeah. either. Either. E- either. Either. Yeah. yeah. I used to hate Nick when I was little because I thought it was too spiky. Right. But also hey, Nicholas it. sounds too sort of Dickensian. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. It? It's like yeah. a bit of a mouthful. Oh, Nicholas. I like Nicholas. I like Nicholas. Do you like Nicholas? Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's John. go Nicholas. Yeah. <laughs> Nicholas, Angela and Sasha. Yes. Yeah. Oh, together. Isn't that Perfect. lovely? Together. Yes. Together. <laughs> um, well, we're dead excited, Jaron. We are going to kick off with a rosé. So cheers. Um, cheers to 2024. Yeah. Here's yes. to 2024. Cheers, cheers guys. And Thank here we you go. Guys. We are going for the Waitrose Loved and Found Norello Mascalis Rose, um, which is nice, fresh, delicate, with Sicilian citrus and floral jasmine. Ooh. Ooh. Very nice. Very nice. Nice. It is. It's really nice and light. I yeah. really like it. We're recording this before Christmas, but this goes out beginning of January. How do you like to tackle a January? Are you one of them people that just get carries on Christmas or are you like New Year, New Me? I find actually the hardest bit is the festive gooch. So that bit yes. sort of in between Christmas and New Year's, mm. that's when I think it can get like about out of control of points. But once you get into <laughs> January, I think it's too hard then to like when you're in that like cold, dark January to mm. give yourself a harder time. So I like to not exercise that much and ease myself <laughs> into the new year not giving myself too much of a hard time yes go on holidays don't really start replying to emails until yeah. like maybe the 15th yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. a very good attitude <laughs> yeah. I like that yeah but obviously if Steven Spielberg's listening to this and you contact me on the 9th I will reply yes she'll go back Steve of course just a few more days anyone like that anyone like that of course I'll get back around the 15th around the 15th but how are you how is life life is all good uh-huh. Everything's great. I'm currently loving in Liverpool at the minute, so it's so nice to come down to London and we're doing a bit of press, a bit of showbiz stuff. A bit of showbiz. Ooh. Yeah, that's nice. How come Liverpool? How come you live in Liverpool? So I met, when I met my partner, Hector, he was living in Berlin during the pandemic. Uh-huh. And then when the lucky D's hit, he wanted to move back to the UK, but he didn't know where to go and Liverpool's a brilliant city and it's uh-huh. got... So, like such a great music scene there that he ended up moving there. I was living in London for like 10 years and then I, we just decided to stay there. It's a great city, Liverpool. It's a, it's a great, great city. city. It's great crack. It's a great blow dry. The people yeah. are lovely. <laughs> I love that. It great is, blow dry. It is. It's a good boy. I really struggled with that, you know, loving yeah. in London and paying £50 for a shite blow dry. Just yeah. <laughs> tap me over the age. It tap me over the age. So that's great. And the people are, and it's good bang for your buck yeah. as well, yeah. let's be honest. So yeah. we're really happy there. And geographically, it's quite fair. And I'm under fairness, mm-hmm. you know, between Derry and Glasgow. Yeah. So it's a good jumping off point. It's a good yeah. spot. Good it's base. A good spot. And do you have family come visit? Do they like a little weekend jaunt in Liverpool? They do. Actually, next week is my 30th. So we're having a big uh, soiree, which I'm now that it's getting close to the time. I'm like, why the bejesus did I do this? <laughs> like at the time when I organised it, it felt like a great idea. And like, I'm not to sound like a martyr. <laughs> but I was like, oh, I'm doing it for the benefit of everybody else. It would be nice to bring everybody that I love together mm-hmm. in one yeah. room. But now I'm like, what was that? Thank God. Yeah, you get that pre-party panic. Yeah. I've got I major that. Yeah. So are they all coming to you? Are you hosting it? Or are you so I'm hosting out? it. I've okay. rented a venue and every all my fa- family's fine. I'm from... 
Ireland. My parents live in Spain, so they're coming from there. Yeah. Hector's family's all coming from Scotland, wow. and all my mates are coming. So it's going to be great. <laughs> it's going <laughs> to be fine. It's going to be fine. It's going to be But I get like that. Yeah. I've done it before where I've cancelled a party. Wow. No. Yeah, when it's got close to it, because wow. it's just too much, like... Yeah. I don't know what it is. Like mm. that pre- do you ever get... Well, you get stressed because you want everyone to have a good time and yeah. inevitably you've forgotten something and then yeah. that becomes a big drama. Exactly. But I'm you- more worried about it. Like, I start to get stressed. Not that this has ever happened. If I'm going to be on good form. Right, Not okay. if I'm going to be on good time, like, have a good time, but, like, what if I'm just in a bad mood? Yeah, yeah, And that yeah. affects everybody else. Sure. But you know when sometimes yeah. things are so nice, yeah. you get overwhelmed, you get yeah, grumpy. I'm think, like, inside, deep with them, I'm actually, like, a 75-year-old man. <laughs> <laughs> and that comes out sometimes. <laughs> and also, Brilliant. people will be expecting, like, oh, it'll yeah. be fun. Yeah. Search is fun. Yeah, Hex exactly. is fun. It's yeah. going to be yeah, good. Yeah. And then you might be like, I'm not really in a fun mood. I'm today. not really in a fun mood. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about sad stuff, guys. Yeah. And you're very sad about that. Yeah. 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 No, it oh will be good crack. And I've booked a drag queen and stuff. So oh, I think brilliant. that definitely takes the heat yeah. off yeah. because they'll be doing the hosting and stuff. So, and I've also never thrown a party mm. this size before. I think like everything else has been thrown for me. I mean, yeah. per, per me. Yeah. Um, so really this is the first story. time as an adult yeah. I've like done this. So I think that having a drag queen that's going to like take the heat off yes. might be good. That's what Madonna's done on this tour that she's on. She what? has a drag queen to take the heat off. That's genius. Uh, yeah, so there's Bob the drag queen. <laughs> You're going to say Madonna lives with a drag queen <laughs> yeah. To take the heat off. Yeah, so in the show, the drag queen comes on and yeah. does it. And is it not rumoured that she's going to do the legendary slack? I think she'll do the Sunday night at Glasgow. Right, yeah. okay. You think she'll she'll happy think so. days. I'm just saving my money then. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, think, I think she will. Because we met at Glastonbury. Yes, we That's did. That's where we first met. Yeah. Um, and do you go every year? Do you always always attend? I've Ooh. went now the last two years, so uh-huh. I've been lucky that obviously... Heck gets the tickets because oh. I'm not really good at organising things. I found a lot once. Good luck to the party. Exactly. <laughs> That's all. I'm actually impressed with myself. That. So I've been the last two years, and I, it's the most special place oh. ever. I've absolutely loved it. It's Perfect. brilliant. Yeah. This year, I think that would be very fun. Madonna on a yeah on a Sunday night. Has she oh, done it before? Nick? Yeah. Never done Never. it. Never. Oh, there you go. So it's Couldn't definitely yeah. going to be her then. Don't you think? Because yeah. my friend was saying, she said, "Oh, I don't think." Um, Madonna would do it. It's a bit like below her. Do you I was think? like, nah. What? Who's I, below Glastonbury? Exactly. Do you know what I mean? That's I like being above Christmas. Wise up. Yeah, as yeah. if. <laughs> You're not above it. Yeah. Are you catering the party? Are we. I wasn't going to because, in my personal opinion, I don't think anyone eats party food because it's yes. just food that has like been breathed on by like a hundred mm. drunk people. So I wasn't going to. And then last week I was home with my family and my mum was asking me and I was like, no, I'm not going to bother doing food, mum. I'm mm. doing drinks, but I'm not going to do food. And she nearly lost her life. <laughs> she was like, you can't expect people and not feed them. That's a disgrace. She was all, I'll organise the food. I'll pay for them because I will just be so embarrassed if I don't feed people. <laughs> I was like, right, so now I've organised food, so there is going to be food at the party. Okay, there is going to be food. And it's never it. No, no, yeah. people, you might have like a little nibble of an olive. Yeah, you might have a quick croquette. Yeah, that's But that's it. about it. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. about it. I want to, oh my God. <laughs> Ooh. Lasagna's so here. Much. What a treat. And I'm so believe. excited about this. Why are you not a lasagna Thank you. Because I don't love lasagna, and, and I'm so excited about this. This is so nice. I can't believe I got food cooked to me, Peggy. <laughs> <laughs> and Ange, talk me through this lasagna. So this recipe is called the best lasagna. The best I by know. Martha Collison. So um, it's yeah, beef mince, pork mince, um, what we call a sofrito, carrot, onion, celery, uh, red wine, um, beef stock, mm-hmm. and I use tomato puree, not tin tomatoes. So no tin tomatoes. Little could... tiny little bit, but mainly tomato puree, and then cook it for a long time, for about you know, good two hours. Oh, wow. You know, slow and long as much as you can. Because um, I'd be worried about it being wild jiggly. What do you mean jiggly? <laughs> like just like about jiggly with tomato puree and not the plum. Do you know they sort of like hold it together? But that's not. Oh a no, it will. It, will. it the, will. The tomato puree thickens it in a way much Ooh. more than the tin tomatoes. I always think tin tomatoes make them too wet. Yeah, because you don't want it yeah. smushy. Smush Whereas the tomato puree, and if you cook it out, it doesn't give that really too much tomato mm. taste. Because otherwise, I think tomatoes take over. I've it's just got a really. They do. Get yeah. In here. Yeah. 
And then may you make it like a classic lasagna with a white sauce, a bechamel sauce, you know, white sauce, the ragu, your layers of lasagna, parmesan. And oh, keep sweet doing Jesus, that's so nice. Sweet Jesus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. That is so lovely. Mm-hmm. Wow, that is good. That you know, is so I, nice. <laughs> My friend Salvatore makes it because the southerners in Ischia, mm. in the south of Naples, they put boiled eggs in their lasagna. Oh, I'd Ooh. like that. Yeah. I'd love an egg. Really? Oh, well, next time he makes it, because I don't mm. know, it's wrong on every level, Salvatore. Um, <laughs> he puts eggs and they do meatballs as well. So they have a, like, a meatball ragu and the eggs and the bechamel and ricotta. I mean, it's, I, I said, it feels like you're just emptying your fridge to make mm. this lasagna. Oh, but crazy. it is quite delicious when he makes so it. So the pasta sheets are on top of meatballs. Yeah. Must be like a wee tractor. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. is Matt with the so, egg on yeah. top. They've done it. With yeah. the egg and all. Yeah. yeah. Mm. People love it. I think I've only ever had rubbish lasagnas. There you go. Because a lasagna reminds so me, shocked. not this, obviously, it's a bit like, you know, you get on like a plane mm-hmm. or like your mum had microwave it for you yeah. in the week. Mm-hmm. So I'd, I'd never, ever order lasagna yeah. when I went out. Or when yeah. someone dies, they always bring Yeah, they bring a lasagna like, <laughs> sorry about the death. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you really no. got this sad yeah. side to you. I'm yeah. this now. Like, I might not be happy for my party. Yeah. Death yeah. means death. lasagna to you. Guys, it's Christmas. Let's talk about death. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 but yeah, that I know what is mean, though, but that is delicious mm. pleasure taste sensation that so how what are your tips Ange, for making this the best lasagna what what are the tips what do you think I think you if you can wrong? make the ragu the night before so it really imparts the flavour mm-hmm. I think um, if you can it's a real ball ache to do but if you can dice the meat rather than mince it just has a different texture so what you it. just get a cut of meat and chop it yeah, all up yeah chop it up yourself why, but that's why? for just ragus in general but you know if you've got you haven't got the time mince good quality mince always put pork in Okay. A lot of people just do beef, but I think you need pork to put the fat in mm. to it. Um, you, and de- and then if you've got things like old Parmesan rinds in your fridge, put them in the white sauce, and that gives a bit of unami flavour, and even a little bit right at the end into your ragouts, and they sort of season it mm. up. But a tomato puree for me is the bigger tip rather than tin tomatoes. I think it just keeps it a much drier sauce. Yeah, still it, moist it, it, and it lovely. It is more, but without it that's being too dry. Dry is the wrong word, but it's more mm. like I know what you mean. Together, yeah, it's not sweating tomatoes. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this recipe, if you want to try this, uh, of course you can try on waitrose.com forward slash dish recipes. It's on there. Mm. Uh, the best lasagna is the name of this lasagna, and I, I think and it, is, it, is it is fitting. Yeah, mm. it really is. Really is fitting. Um, we are going to pair this with a red wine. Uh, this is Waitrose Loved and Found La Crema, uh, which is a grape variety um, from Italy's Le Marche region. Is that perfect Italian for me there, Le Marche? Le Marche. Le Marche. Yeah. Le Marche. Le Marche, yeah, Marche, yeah. Um, <laughs> is, you know I'm half Italian. And, um, I'm half Italian. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's nice richness with this wine, which is Beautiful. perfect to go with the lasagna. Amazing. We're happy. Yeah. Matt, I've just, I did a job out in Italy this year. Oh, nice. Oh, yes. So I was out there for seven months loving. Wow. And I obviously was really trying, right? And like, I'm dyslexic, so sometimes things don't sink in that fast. Yeah. Um, but they sink in in different ways, let's say. <laughs> I, I landed out and I was trying to make the effort with the crew. And I, we were like three weeks into the job and I kept landing Andy, like the hair and makeup rooms in the morning being all, when? Series, <laughs> when a series, when a series, and uh, <laughs> Zasha Mama. <Not> this. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody corrected me on it. The cheeky shit. Shut yeah. up. Everybody was letting me just run around calling Argentina. That's no, but you. When is that? I think you should introduce it. But the thing is, about it, well, they all started they, saying so it by the end of the job. They are. They are. <laughs> they're never going to be that rude to correct yeah. you. They're probably like all behind your back and look at that and one. No. <laughs> they were like, she's so cute. Uh, <laughs> when is that? Is, did they say it, that back to you though? They were saying it back to me as oh well. They were God, like, Bella, when is there? And then <laughs> it was about three weeks under the job and this wonderful American actress that me and me and Zasha play this like double act on the show and the Cameron and uh, it was about three weeks under the job and she was like, I'm so sorry, but it's not Buenos Aires. And I was like, <laughs> Are you actually being serious? <laughs> I was all, why are you all saying Buenos Aires to me? No, she was all, I think it's like a joke with the film that you don't know about. And I was all, oh no. Oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> 
That is so good. What were you up yeah. there filming? Was that for the Doll Factory? It was for an FX show that will be out, I'm sure, at some point next year called The D Cameron. That's in like the 1300s or something, right? It is. Huh? How is it doing like a full on period drama mm. like that? Well, full on period's an absolute nightmare. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolute nightmare. But period drama was wild crack. You know, it was. It's such an amazing premise as a TV show, and the writer done such a fantastic job that immediately I fell in love with it. It sort of got this like magical, but quite dark and surrealist mm. um, tone to it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know if you've heard of it. Yeah. Yes. It's like old Italian literature. I think it was like one of the first comedic tales, and it's about, it follows 10 characters. That have been that are sent out to this villa, um, that have been invited out to ride out the Black Plague, which was like one of the oh, most wow. deadliest viruses. So yeah. very fitting, and it's like about all these nobles, some of their handmaids going out, and it turns into this like wine-soaked sex party and madness and survival of them all day. So Jesus. it was great. Yeah. Jesus. Oh Jesus. Jesus Christ. Not like my Christmases anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your trips to Italy alone? Yeah. <laughs> the nail on the head then. Yeah. Yeah. And, and where are you filming? <laughs> We were in Felman in Rome. Oh, amazing. Oh, wow, nice. Yeah. You were out there for what, seven months? Seven months, <gasps> yeah, yeah. And is that like, a, I mean, it sounds like really nice, like seven months in Rome. I imagine you're at work every day, aren't you? Mm. I was at work I, nearly yeah. every day, and we yeah. had like the usual one or two days off a week, mm. which is grand. I'm just so delighted when I'm working. It's just brilliant. Uh-huh. So it was great, and I loved Rome. Obviously, the food was amazing. Mm. Hard to regulate yourself, but it was sort of <laughs> crazy that it's such a major city. And I understand because the Italians are so good at their own food, but they're not good at any all their food. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you can't get a good Chinese or an you Indian. You could get Chinese. What did you oh, try? And them was disgusting. <laughs> and I, I tried them everywhere because obviously after seven months, like, and I never thought these words would come out of my mouth. Uh. That I, and not, now I'm back in the pasta and pizza game. Yeah, yeah. of course, because I'm not a psycho, but. <laughs> After seven months, I was like, I can't, can't like, after five months, I couldn't do it anymore. But they were so bad at everything else. It was either pasta, they were good at sushi. Yes. But in my opinion, can you really mess up sushi? (laughs) <laughs> like I've never been wowed like and Hector my partner is such a like culture vulture that he showed me so many amazing and he took me to Nobu and stuff like that mm. obviously it was class loved the cocktails mm-hmm. and stuff but when people are like oh the sushi at Nobu is amazing it's cold rice with cold fish on top like <laughs> how could you how could you mess that up and how long were those chefs training it like how long were you training to just do the same shape with different fish and rice <laughs> or am I missing something <laughs> I really like this when we have a guest that will eat anything. Mm. Oh. Am I right in saying so, that you will eat anything? anything. I hate when some. I, I yeah. don't want to say. Well, what if I, I hate when someone's a fussy eater. I'm like, just shut up. <laughs> just <laughs> eat it. Uh, Me, she's a bit funny about like, is that cooked properly? When we're in a restaurant, I'm like. Yeah. But I think that the, the type of people to cry at a sleepover also and go home early. <laughs> <laughs> when someone's fussy and comes into my mind, you would have left yeah. my birthday party early. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, just like, get on with yeah. it. Get just on with it. it. Yeah. What do you think that stems from? Is, do you think it's because your mum was a chef? Or do you think it was your mum being like, just eat it and show? Just eat it. But I do remember recognising, and I know that sounds desperate, but going round to other people's houses and recognising that my mum was such a good cook as well. And mm, being like, yeah. oh, the great for He's a bit watery. <laughs> Sharon, was that just Bristol? You didn't put any of the shoe in? Yeah. <laughs> no shoe. Oh. 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 Brilliant, I love that. It's so true. Now, we're going to do a quick fire round on some of the foods. Mm. So just tell us the first thing that pops into your head right. when we say coleslaw. Dairy. Dairy? Uh, Why yeah. dairy? I have no idea when this happened, but dairy people just love coleslaw. I think it's yeah. actually all Irish people. I think it's an Irish right. thing, yeah. But where did that all come people from? people who don't like coleslaw. My mum, parent, my, I always forget about my dad. My mum and her husband, my dad. <laughs> 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 That's terrible. That's desperate, isn't it? I'll keep it while hurt. Oh, I'm <laughs> 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 my mum and my dad live yeah. in Spain and mm. there's loads of Irish women out there also in Spain and they're all friends and they've now started a coastal community no brilliant <laughs> where like uh, once a week one of them agrees to make the batch yeah. of coastal and they like uh, run Split it around it. each other yeah. split it because oh, wow. the coastal in Spain is so bad yeah. uh, oh I love that a coastal 
<laughs> I love that. I like too. Um, next up, we go to Volavant. I think I'm a younger brother. He like charmed a dinner lady at our primary school so much that she was sneaking him volvons, checking no. volvons. Uh, he was getting wow. like eight. I mean, that's quite an impressive primary school, if you don't mind saying. Yeah. Volvons. That's volvons, yeah. yeah. I think that is. That's, that's a big dairy thing as well. You can get volvons at any time of the day in dairy wow. and make sure. Really? Uh, they sell them in corner shops. You'll get like obviously milk bread volvons. No way. No, I've never seen the volavon that that like dead posh. Yeah. Or just, sort of a fancy party food. Uh, yeah. We love a volavon. Oh. We open pie with a hat. <laughs> uh, next up, we want to talk to you about ice cream. Love ice cream. Do you love ice cream? I love it. Uh, now, we're going to do an ooh. ice cream dessert. Do you ever get that feeling at the back of your molars where that squirts up and it goes... Yeah. When it's yeah, so it tasty, the thought of it. <laughs> the thought of it. I yeah. get that when I see a packet of discos. <laughs> I street. love when I see a bag of discos, my mouth's like, <laughs> <laughs> that, that thing from Jurassic Park. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the same, what's your favourite? The salt, salt and vinegar. vinegar. Oh, you're a man mm. after my own heart. That is the best, Chris. Oh, oh wow. Oh my Anne. god, that's so sweet. Oh, that's so cute. And thousands. Oh. Vanilla and chocolate there. Hundreds and thousands. Chocolate sauce and a little bit of. Um, Pistachio and that hazelnut is lovely. brittle. Did you make this brittle? I made the brittle, yes. Oh, thank and you so much. That's a pleasure. That's Sorry, I've left the ice cream out. It's melted a little bit, but it's fine. That's it's a perfect right. way to have it. It should be. Yeah, perfect. I don't really like chocolate ice cream. Do you not? Mm -mm. What's your beef with it then? Why do you not like I it? I love chocolate, but I don't really like chocolate ice cream. Do you think it's just in the wrong form? Like sort of saying kids in leather jackets? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you mean. Yeah. It's, like, it's just you don't need to do that. We don't need to do that. Leave them in their separate places yeah. in the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's exactly <laughs> like that. You're like, why would, why you, would you do that? Um, hey, we've got to talk about Derry Girls just because. Of know. course. Wow. How did you get involved with it? And, and was it a, a ex really exciting thing to know that there was a show being made about a group of girls from yeah. where you're from and you get to be one of them? I know, and I got to be one of them. Do you know, sometimes when I think back on it, and then obviously. There's been more space now in the last year to have to reflect on it and have a bit of hindsight. Mm. I s even more so now, I cannot believe my luck that mm. I was just out of drama school and a fantastic writer had made this amazing mm -hmm. TV show based on where I'm from. It's like that is just extraordinary mm -hmm. luck, do you know. So, how like, long from finishing drama school to you starting filming Derry Girls? I think like a year. Oh, wow. So I did like other odd wee bits of telly and I um, started doing theatre and stuff like that. So I was sort of plot, plodding along. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was still doing other jobs. At the time, I was selling HelloFresh door to door, um, which was commission based. And I didn't make a penny. And, I was <laughs> like, Come on. and then I ended up having, getting sacked from it. And then I got an email for Dairy Gears on the same day. So it mm. felt like all very full circle. Honestly, the maddest day in my life. I got sacked and then I went to Greg's and I was crying and I was on the phone to my mum and this Irish builder came in and he was like, are you okay? And I was like, oh, I just got fired from this job. And he was like, we're actually building these apartments for the Man City players. Come down and we'll give you a job. And it was like dark. It was seven o'clock at night. And I was like, I'm not too sure about going on yeah. <laughs> And he was like, he was like such a weird uh, thing. And he was like, right, give me a second. He was like, what's your name? I was like, seriously. He was like, where are you from? I was like, Terry, what's your second name? Jackson. He was like, oh, two seconds. I made a couple of calls and came back in. And he was like, it's your father, Sean. I knew all my family. Mate. No way. Because everybody at home knows mm. each other. And I was like, right, fair enough. I will come to the building site with yeah. <laughs> But I better be let the whole way. <laughs> and we went down and I met the boss, like his boss. And fair enough, they were building these amazing apartments. And these mm. men that I just met that day were like so nice to me. And they gave me a really good job. I was a snagger. Um, on the building site where it's going around pointing out problems. Love that. I oh, love that. Yeah. A good job. You missed a bit. Yeah. That's fallen down. It was wild you. crack, you know, when they got yeah. me a wee pink card hat. No, I was having the time of my life. They were paying me as well. <laughs> <laughs> they were paying me a fortune as well. Ah. They were paying me really well. Yeah. And then I came out of the building site. I locked in my phone. I had an email that was like, there's an audition for this thing called Dairy Gears. And I was like, what a day. What a yeah. day. What a day. I've been up since six o'clock this morning. And I'm on my third job. <laughs> <laughs> and what a day. And what a show. And like oh, yeah. said, like the, the, you guys are, and you are so fantastic. Yes. In it and the writing We're right as in well. I just remember watching that and being mm. like, mm. wow. And so well-formed yeah. characters all the way through. 
one of the best things that's ever happened to me is meeting Lisa McGee, that there's sort of this amazing example of this woman from my hometown that mm. we can all look up to and I can really look up to of how she conducts herself in this industry and stuff. Yeah. Was, it made such a huge impression on me, the experience of the job, but mainly Lisa, that mm. it's like, to look back on it, it's like, thank God. Mm. Thank yeah. God. Yeah, yeah. wow. <laughs> well, and there's been talk yeah. and rumours of it becoming a movie. Mm-hmm. Do you think that's something that you'd, you'd like to see happen, a Derry Girls movie? Yeah, I think that would be great. Mm. I think it's so brilliant to see what everybody has went on to do after it. Yeah. And I mean, the cast is all so talented and it was amazing to work with them all. So it's interesting to see what everyone's went on to do afterwards. And I think it's always good to give these things space creatively and then come back. And mm-hmm. I think it also might be more interesting, you know, to revisit these characters at a later date. But like, honestly, that's not down to us. You know, that would be down to Lisa. But I would read the ingredients of a pot noodle if she asked me to. So, <laughs> Lisa, if you're listening. <laughs> come on, Lisa. <laughs> we all want it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right, we come to the end of the show question. Should you choose to answer it, mm-hmm. you can win a Waitrose Ooh, goodie Thank bag. you very much. We've basically done the big shot for you. Yeah. Searsha SMG, don't worry, there's no question today. You're guaranteed the goodie bag. It's January after all. We would like... You to use the end of the show question to do some manifest and tell us your dream role in a biop. Who, alive or dead, you would love to play? So who, alive or dead, would you love to play? Yeah. Mm. Mm. I'd love to play Blondie. <gasps> oh, yeah, yeah, come on. I'd love that whole journey, oh like Debbie Harry's whole journey. I think oh, that, that would be brilliant, that. actually. And the has there ever been there? There's been a film about Blondie, has there? I They've done the so. Sex Pistols TV yeah. series, yeah. but I don't know, it wasn't heavily featured no. on Blondie. But let's be honest, if that happens, it's probably going to go to Miley Cyrus. No. <laughs> no. no, I reckon you've got an in there. For you. I, reckon, yeah. Yeah, I can see you as Debbie Harry. Definitely. That would be Pair great. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That would be great, Greg. Oh yeah. Would be um, so, said, thank you so much for coming around. Thank round. you yeah. so uh, much. Make sure you watch Sosha in the Doll Factory right now on Paramount Plus. Uh, a round of applause yes. for Sosha oh, Jackson, you everybody. So Thank you. It was a real pleasure and all of it was made. Thank you for doing that for me. Thank you.